All right, Psalm 78 for this week's set of lessons. Let's use the concept of obscure, hoping by the time we get to Psalm 84 to actually be able to use the theme clarify. But in each of these seven Psalms, there's going to seem to be a way in which Israel obscured the way that God was trying to lead them. So let's call this one an obscure way because it's going to seem to follow a pattern where God is going to try to lead Israel in a certain direction only to say, but they followed another path or took up another way of doing things. Beginning in verses one through four, it's going to talk about the way in which the psalmist is going to open his mouth in a parable to talk to them about things that they had once heard and known. Moving into verses five through eight to talk about exactly that way in which God tried to lead them in the form of a testimony or a history and a law a way that they should follow and not forget. But in verses 9 through 11, he's going to talk about the way in which they both refused to follow and eventually forgot the substance of their relationship with God, meaning they lost track of the spirit of what he was trying to do for them and through them, leading into a description in verses 12 through roughly 16 about how he provided for them abundantly, going back to the days in which he led them out of captivity in Egypt. However, providing for them abundantly wasn't going to be enough because he's going to go on to say, but they, in verses 17 through 20, complained for what they craved over and above the way in which God abundantly provided for what they needed, at which point he's going to describe in verses 21 through roughly 31, the way in which he went further, meaning God went further to fulfill their cravings. However, verse 32 is going to seem to describe the way in which providing for their cravings only seemed to make them more entitled, leading them to do wrong more and more. Verse 33, among others, is then going to describe the way in which he eventually disciplines them. However, verses 34 through 37 are going to describe the way in which they repent, but it's going to be insincere, understanding that just about as soon as he can show them mercy, they're going to turn back to whatever it is they would like to do, understanding that verses 38 through 39 are going to describe his forgiveness. Verses 43 through 55, describing the way in which he showed them kindness, going back to the illustration of, once again, the Exodus, how he guided them out of the bondage they experienced in Egypt only to not only deliver them from the Egyptians, but deliver them into a land that they didn't have to cultivate, quite possibly understanding all of the labor they endured or were actually subjected to while in Egypt. Verses 56 through 64, going on to describe the way in which his forgiveness and kindness essentially seem to amount to little more than permission for once again, them doing whatever they wanted to do once the pressure was off. A cycle that he is eventually going to seem to bring to a close in verses 65 through 72, where it's going to describe the way in which God eventually chose a tribe, Judah, and a shepherd, David, from amongst his people to lead them back to the way in which he was always trying to counsel them to go, understanding that David was the king through whom God would eventually bring the Christ. And this chapter reminded me of something we noticed when we originally went through this portion of Israel's history, roughly around Exodus 17. And that is, we can get into the habit of getting our way in ways that are completely destructive to the relationships that God's blessed us with. And that seems to be the pattern that Israel fell into during this period of their history, a pattern that we're being reminded of in Psalm 78, the way in which they got a taste for getting their way by complaining, not caring or not realizing the way in which they were destroying the underlying relationship they had with the God who was providing for them. And so they seem to become experts in manipulating short-term circumstances to win short-term benefits that compromise their long-term success. And so my prayer for you is my prayer for me, that God willing, we allow him to show us the ways in which we can meet our short-term and long-term needs in healthy ways, as opposed to drifting into the temptation to cut corners to get short-term benefits that actually cut us short of the longevity God seeks to provide us.